let's get cooking. Only shooting stars break the Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm playing Rocco Street Chef. This is the Naya chef that cares about cards being played or cast from exile for either player. This is a really fun and fairly explosive deck because it's making plus one plus one counters and food whenever a player is taking things from exile and putting them into play. At the end step, each player gets a little bit of card advantage, which can be good and bad. You might be giving your opponent some cards they really need, but if they want to play them, well, they're, they're going to be paying the price of us getting a snack and a plus one plus one counter on one of our creatures. One of the biggest synergies in this deck is actually using those foods for mana, using inspiring statuary so you can use these to cast all of your spells, or Knight of Sweets Revenge to tap them for green mana so you can cast very expensive spells or just keep casting spells out of your deck. A lot of this deck cares about exiling things and casting them, which we actually have a new way of doing. Sure, we had Cascade before, but now we have Discover. Kentorius cares about things being moved from exile into play too, and I really do love the Discover ability on this and a couple other cards like the Trumpeting Carnosaur, triggering Rocco and getting us more delicious snacks, as well as like whatever spell we happen to be casting. We also have a lot of impulse draws, I guess that's what they're called, where you exile cards and you can play them until end of turn or end of your next turn. This can end up with a lot of great stuff because you can also do it from your opponent's deck using you find some prisoners or Ragavan or Rahilda. Yeah, I don't just care about playing my cards, I care about playing your cards. So we're going to take Rocco into the queue. We're gonna make some food, exile some cards and play them too. Pantalaza, son, Favored. It's the dinosaur that discovers, and if our opponent is discovering, it still triggers our commander because that casts things for free from exile. Uh, we have some nice turn one ramp into our commander, hopefully on turn two here. Um, we are going to grab Temple Garden. Shocking it in. Love paying three life on turn one for the delighted halfling. She's just a little guy. Their deck like my deck is going to be ramping up this first turn. I see a fellow delighted halfling. Very delightful. Put some cards into exile. One for you, one for me. Want a thrashing brontodon? I would love one. You, you should play it. For no particular reason. The halfling is adorable. I also have a pretty nice next turn here. Because we have Anna Pakal, who's a new addition to this deck and cares about the number of counters on her. We can get some extra counters on her by casting stuff from exile. Bringing in the gnomes. I could play Trail of Crumbs here, but I think I'd rather hold up the Tamiyo safekeeping in case they get some removal. We got a land. They got a dinosaur that costs way too much mana. They're not going to be able to cast it. I do love dinos. I have a lot of fun, like sometimes just playing the Pantlaza deck for no reason other than I like a good dinosaur. They discover, and they discovered Forerunner of the Empire. That's going to let them uh, tutor for a dinosaur and put it on top of their deck. Also, whenever a dinosaur enters the battlefield, they can deal one damage to every creature. It enables enrage. Get angry. gonna be no aside. Hi, Kogel and Yadaro. I'm going to eat a delicious snack. I 
I'm like considering the Kentorius. Don't mind me. Doing a little bit of ramp. She's gonna get some counters on her. We're gonna throw all these at the invasion of Zendikar. We will protect and Pakal. And it's okay if the gnomes die, because we're gonna get more gnomes. Battles, when flipped, cast from exile, which gets us another plus one, plus one counter, which we're just going to throw here on Anim Pakal. Now they've got that Kogel and Yudaro in exile, ready to rumble, ready to uh, blast my gnomes. And I bet they were hoping to fight Anim Pakal here, but Anim Pakal is bigger than Kogel and Yudaro. Oh, also, this is a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur and an ape and a turtle. It also wins us the game. GG! Simone Quandrix Prodigy. She is a Simic commander that puts extra lands into play. She also can draw cards. I think? Yeah, draw cards. She's cool. She's uncommon. She's one of the Strixhaven students. And she can also be stepped on by a Bone Crusher giant. I just suspect that this is going to be a Simic Flash deck that's just a little bit lower powered than kind of the alternate for two mana, which would be Gretchen. It could also just be Ramp. I won't know until it happens. I don't have anything to cast on turn one. Here comes Zimone, uncounterable. Thanks to the delighted halfling. Got Thornwood Falls. I can step on you or you. I'm gonna step on the halfling. Putting a card into exile, an adventure, which would then trigger Rocco. Ooh, Invasion of Segovia. I actually love this card. This, by the way, does lean into the this is Simic Flash strategy because this lets you untap your creatures and use them to cast non-creature spells. That's the wrongs! Thank you for the sub! Fifty-eight, feeling great. Thank you for the fifty-eight month resub. They're considering something. Hmm. Considering the top card of their deck, I'm keeping it. Yes, if they cast the back side of it, it does trigger Rocco, which happens when they remove the last defense counter is what they're called, I think. Yes, defense counter. Blocking with a dryad. Goodbye, mini Kraken. Micro Kraken. They're so little. Rocco resolves. We're gonna have the Bone Crusher Giant. I guess I got enough blockers. I'll swing in with the Dryad. Growth Spiral. No lands in hand. Interesting. They got an Explore here so they can keep on ramping. Just keep ramping. Just keep ramping. Imprisoned in the moon! Rocco is now, well, just a uh, land. Rocco's a land. Can't believe you put my commander in the moon. They can stay there for a while. That's honestly fine. I 
I don't actually need to crack the fetch land because of Dryad. I'm going to turn all of my creatures into mana dorks. So Nice. Tatiova, landfall, draw a card. That is a land, sort of. We get an extra card from Exile. Oh, and Pippin! I am Pipping. Oh, they know exactly what I want to do. I'm going to put that back into their hand. Or, well, into Exile, from which they can cast it later. We Pip. We Pip in. This way, when we play our lands, we get extra food. When I play this, I'll get extra food, too. Let me check out their hand first, though. Uh, you. Into the north. Joint exploration and dig through time. This will make dig through time cost more. Everybody wants counters. Especially me. I can draw some cards off Pippin. Uh, I'm going to throw two of you at the invasion of Gobakan and one here. They might be interested in a double block on Urabrask since it's currently cutting them off. Oh, okay, cool. This is going to flip invasion of Gobakan, which is, in fact, cast from exile. Some of this, some of that, some of you. These guys are going to get additional plus one, plus one counters, and now I can protect my board using the Light Shield Array. Does not protect from mass bounce effects, but it protects from a lot of other stuff. They got a land, so we know at all the cards they have access to, unless they use Joint Exploration to draw, or when they draw off Tatiova. Land drawing more cards. That was played from Exile. We'll put another counter on Avacyn's Pilgrim. The One Ring. That buys them a turn by giving them protection. If only I could put this back into my hand. Into the north. Ramps them up. Draws them another card. Gains them another life. And we are going to keep exiling from their graveyard because they have that dig through time. And uh, I guess I'll also eat some food. Like I got too much food. Yeah, I don't have an, I don't have anything for you, trail crumbs. That's fine. Okay, signet, cool. We're crafting, hitting Zimone. Find some prisoners can only destroy artifacts. This is indestructible. Tragic, I know. I also can't target them uh, since it's target opponent.
Apple Pay. Giant Killer and Fire Weaver. A Fire Weaver. Okay, the one. That is Sweet's Revenge. Yes, please. Um, I'm tapped out now of only uh, everything but these. Tap one of them. Oracle and Moldiah. Celestis. Those are both good. Sweet. It's revenge. Now we have tons of green mana. Guess we'll just use the Pippins. We want to sacrifice the ones we've already tapped. Night of Sweet's Revenge is huge. Ooh, PNLR. A keeper in hand, though. Ooh, Camille. And a lot of these, like, I don't really want to do anything with this turn. Because they don't do anything this turn. Sure. I guess that's, uh, that's all I got here. I get attack with you. I don't really think I need to. Would get me one plus one plus one counter. And now a bunch of stuff is gonna happen. Okay, friends resolve. More cards in exile. I guess the Elvish Mystic was free. I could have played it. Can the other guy play too? I know y'all are like saying like, haha, you're taking such an obscenely long turn. It's not very... Have you ever played against a Simic Flash deck with like a Tatiova out? Their turns can take a very long time. Yes, they need Cyclonic Rift or a uh, extra turn card. Something that gets a tons of lands into play. River's Rebuke. Simic can do Simic things. You want PNLR to shine too? Yeah, PNLR will help us do extra violence. They're digging. Gets me uh, two more food. They have four mana still. They didn't find anything that wins them the game. We have tons of card advantage. We have the spirit of a winner. Let's go. High five. How do you do, fellow Rocco? Looks like the two of us are going to be doing a little bit of a cooking together. Let them cook. Like this hand, since it lets me see their hand. But since both of our commanders are symmetrical, they are, um, they're kind of silly together. How do you do, forest? I have a forest plains. Invasion of Gobakan. See what they got. Source Supply of Shares, Trumpeting Carnosaur, and Stroke of Midnight. Um, I think we'll go for... Swords. Playing their commander. Gets me a card, gets them a card. Oh, the Steel Seeker. I don't... I don't think I really want it. I'd rather play the extra land and hold the safekeeping up. They use their uh, high cost swords to plowshares. We give our dry to the Elysian Grove. Hexproof until end of turn. And indestructible. So we can also block.
Nice heroic intervention. Here's a question. Are they gonna buff their goose? Because we're going to play this from exile, exiling Rocco. <laughs> what a good goose. Tyrion Beast Caller gets bigger when you cast creature spells. They have so much food already. GG says good gears. Story has to give it a 14 month resub. Ooh, hey, Rosie. Rosie makes food and puts counters on things when we get food. I'm gonna risk this trying to get a land. Because I'm disappointed I haven't gotten. They do have three mana, so they have Stroke of Midnight available. Cool. We did get a land here. Making things nice and rosy. Lightning Bolt! Fair. Boulder Loft Pathway. By the way, this can also bolt. You can discard it in deal three, but it's way cooler to play it and discover. So we're gonna replay Rocco. Elvish Mystic. This is getting nice and big. And yeah, they definitely have some more like counter stuff. And that's neat. I have a Rocco too. Have I heard of the app Too Good To Go? Yeah, use it. It's a cool one. I can tap this for mana here, but I don't actually have anything I'd be getting. We have another red source. Pass the turn. Hope for the best. Tosky! Oh, I love a good squirrel. I probably should have put a counter on Rocco so it couldn't die to Chandra. This is fine. Now we can put one on Rocco. Because they played that. I remembered how cards work, maybe. Put you outside of Carnosaur range. Are they going to use it? Oh, Stroke of Midnight. Hello and welcome to my beautiful The Stack. Rosie, no! She snacked too close to the sun. Ah, oh, man, I got two lands. I can't play both of these. yourself. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I need you to buff yourself. Okay, uh... One there, two here. They could like, chump block with a beast collar and pull like, all the uh, counters onto the goose. I think that'd be cool. And so this is a card cast from Exile. Well, I guess the giant killer can get beefed up too. See what we exile. I'm probably just using this to gain some life. 
I can't. I can't play this at instant speed. Oh, Katilda. Huh. You're not a human. Oh, I guess you could just use all of this to buff. Since I have some, like, plus one, plus one counter synergy. Yeah, Rocco Scales is, like, a real way you could play this deck. Uh, the giant killer. Here, I'll just do this now. Gain five life. Delicious! There's so much food here! It's a big girl. 10 out of 10, you could say. What do I got? What do you got? Let's find out. The Celestis! <laughs> Alright, Rocco, you're gonna keep growing growing your beast collar? I could tap the beast collar down. Do I demand chaos? Yeah, but card draw first. Tis a veritable feast. <laughs> Kintorius loves that we're casting things from exile. Gives us a little ping pong. Oh my god, I have enough food. Yeah. We can, if we fight this, they just move the counters onto something else. If we fight Rocco. I don't even need to use the food up yet. Because I'll just tap this down so I can attack. Because this has abilities, such as that. Good. Um. Face, Chandra. The exiles, the land. They also got a land. They got a ganjo. You cannot channel, by the way, from exile. It doesn't work. I'm so, I'm so happy we ran into another Rocco. Ooh, Skyclave Apparition taking out the Wicked Wolf. We crack the Light Shield array. Oh, wait, no, they're going for Rocco? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Bye, Rocco! Welcome back, Rocco. If they went for that Wicked Wolf, this array was going to get popped open. I have 12 food. This can get plus 12, plus 12, and 12x indestructible. Here comes the Carnosaur. It is going to discover... You got a Paradise Druid. That's another creature cast. The Beast Collar grows. We're now equivalently sized. My turn. Okay. Ooh, Fire Weaver. Rocco. A card. Fire Weaver. Playing the land. Cards in exile. Oh, creativity. I don't have I don't have enough mana for it right now. Not for the way I want to use it. Next turn. If there is an next turn. I 
I can go for Throws of Chaos or Pippin. I think we do Pippin because that makes two food. Unless we draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, but drawing cards doesn't do anything for me yet. Five. Makes another food. A ping. Ping down to three. Do I have somebody? Oh my god, Rosie's in the graveyard. Go to combat. Swing in with you two. Make our ow grow. Only need to make it grow twice. You know, our wood shine. She was here. I think we're in a good spot. We can completely protect our board from everything but a farewell. At least in these colors. I guess also Sunfall, but... Who would be out here playing Sunfall? What's all that mana for? I bought 45 life. It's Holly, but this is the on attack of Holly. I know, we have the- we, we have the creativity. But like we we just win from Kintorius and uh Fireweaver as it stands. All right, Rocco, you ready? Taught him how to play Rocco. I don't think that's true. I think a lot of people have Rocco decks. Creativity for 10. What if, and I'm running this by chat, what if I did Indomitable creativity, X equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, but I hit five of their food and five of mine to see what would happen. Are they salt roping for real? Eat your food. Well, if they're not here, then I guess we'll fast forward until it is our turn to play. And, uh, go from there? Oh! It's, uh, my turn again. Okay. Pass to attackers. My turn! No! I was gonna see what you got too! Ah, man! Well, we tried. Good game. Revenant Penguin is playing the crime god, Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh. His plus steals a spell. His minus hits your hand and is also a shame that anybody ever uses this because you could be using his plus, which lets you cast your opponent's spells, which is super duper fun. A lot of people know I love casting my opponent's spells. I think it's one of the best things you can do in magic. And I wish all my decks were able to do it. And thankfully this one can! Look, I have crime right here with Rahilda. Hello, it's me, Rahil- Oh, Rahilda's gone. Okay. Fine. Get this dryad and get down the stomping ground. To play an extra land. Johnny Mudley, thank you so much for the 16 month resub. By the way, those are exiled cards. 
Just saying, because Rocco does work like that. Swinging in with Lelia. If she hits a land, we can't play two of them. Dang, it was Contorius. I guess I can exile Baleful Mastery. Hostage taker? Who are you taking hostage? My Lelia? Lelia would get uh, counters for each thing hit on a, on a plus. Goes through like that. Abbotson's Pilgrim. Coming out hanging. Exiling a card. Ooh, indomitable creativity. Ah, uh, but before I have good things to get creative with. Blue Sun's Twilight they could use to steal. Ah, but they have cast a spell. We'll beef up Rocco. And a thought sees. You can seize my thoughts. They're pretty good. You can see is this one and this one. They say no protect, only attack. Should just eat up the graveyard again. I don't get any counters since they're not creatures. Yeah, I still want to do this. X equals three? I think I have enough mana. No, I only have enough for X equals two. Okay, so we're gonna go um, one on Hostage Shaker, one on my food. This will give them something at random, but it will also bring back my Lelia. So they got Spell Thief, but there's no spells still on the stack. Oh, I got Camille? Ah, oh, I'm so happy about this. Camille is going to be discovering during my end step. I'm sorry, I put a creature in the graveyard. We can buff up Lelia. Oops. It happens. Sorry. We're gonna get uh, another spell here. And because of how Discover resolves, each thing that gets exiled is going to separately buff Lelia. Okay, it was the top spell of our deck. This will let me cast all of these next turn. I know is the top one. Noteborn Simulacra, they're making a copy, but it goes to hand. You'd have to cast that for more in order to get it out. And since we just have lethal, we'll just swing in for lethal. Good game. Nethroi, Apex of Death. This is a reanimator commander that mutates to bring back cards from the grave based on their power. Ideally, you're playing lots of low power cards so you can bring back more of them. Uh, we have a lot of great self-milling cards that got added recently and other self-mill synergy like Myco Tyrant, which all work really great with Nethroi. Starlit Storm, thank you so much for the 44 month resub. You got a triome. That's all. I got a, a triome. Is that almost a year? I don't know. I don't know if the math adds up. I Rosie. We got ourselves a once upon a time. Getting Loran, so they'll be able to destroy the Great Henge. Ooh, and a Fenza to bolster. Nice. I'm out here like thinking, do I want to? Do I want to blast? I do want to blast, but not yet. Starting with Lelia, because the earlier I get her out, the bigger she grows. Whenever a card is put into exile, she gets bigger. This gets very strange, by the way, with Discover and Cascade, because when you discover it, you keep exiling cards until you find one. Same with the uh, Cascade. Pretty great. All right, so Anafenza bolsters. Based on toughness, the biggest thing, or the smallest thing, can get a plus one, plus one counter. 
Swinging in again with Lelia. Wish Claw Talisman. What do you think? What do you think the wish for? I'm gonna see if we have a one drop. Not perfect, a zero cost thing. Maybe this will bait the uh, Loran into destroying this. Whoa, Strider. Well, this hinge is gonna be pretty great. Ghost Riders asking if they want to sacrifice anything. It could be the Amalia combo deck. I have seen that before in a Nethroi shell, where it's a life gain deck that's using Amalia and Wild Growth Walker to try and go infinite. Bringing out the Brocco. We only have until end of turn for this. Like I can hold based on what we're gonna get in exile here. It's a low low chance though that I get like a one mana card that I can cast at instant speed. Nice. Elite Spellbinder will let me take a peek at their hand, too. Loran, would you care to destroy the Great Henge? I imagine the answer is yes. It's a Great Henge. One, two, three. They're doing something else. Mutate? Eldric Evolution. Eldric Evolution. Looking for something that costs... Three mana because they sacrificed a goose. Sam! Okay, it is the Samwise one. So you can also do the Sam Cat Oven, right? You think that's what's happening here? Okay, so if you're wondering, Amy, what's going on here? They are able to sacrifice this cat and then keep bringing it back. It's Food combo, baby. We'll give them a little GG as they do their combo bits here. And if you're wondering, Amy, is there anything you could have done to stop this? No, not really. Uh, you can see all the pieces in my hand. Not really any interaction here. We're too busy casting adventures and casting their spells and all that stuff. So we're going to get drained one by one by one by one so we can leave and they win the game. GG, Nethroy. Or, I guess I should say, Sam and his pet cat. Oceantai of Life's Origin. This is a five-color shrine stack. Or, sometimes it's actually not a five-color shrine stack. But I'm going to hope that it's a five-color shrine stack, because I think that's more interesting than the five-color control that I sometimes run into. It's just kind of a bummer. Um, I will keep this, and I have to decide between getting all three of my colors and getting down PNLR early. I'm going to start with just this Battlefield Forge. Um, it doesn't have a modal side. Sanctum of Stone Fang is going to drain me out each turn. For Hilda. We're gonna go for the uh, the red, white, no green. Oh, they didn't cast anything, so we get to double. Ow! Maybe we'll get something nice and cheap. Heliod or search for his Kanta. His Kanta will help me filter to what I need, so I will play it. I didn't get a third land though. Hmm, not playing Goshen Tie this turn. Faber Elder. Get loads of mana. Virtual loyalty, listen, you're great, but I need lands. Thank you. 
appreciate this. Appreciate this a lot. More than you know. We bop it. We bop it. And there's nothing I can play. So we don't play it. Hilda, keep doing work. You're doing amazing. We love you. Goshentai comes out and makes a little buddy. Avacyn's Pilgrim, you get this out of here! <gasps> a land? Oh my goodness. Finally done it. I found land. I'll attack with Rahilda again. They block with the baby shrine. And I'll use this stolen binding the old gods to kill the Goshen Tide of Life's Origin. Casting things from exile is very powerful. I do also love that this will hopefully eventually turn into a land. I'm doing what I can! Fightful banditry, R.I.P. Rahilda. She takes two damage and they get a treasure. They have three mana still up. Enchantress's presence. Draw a card, or uh, draw a card when they cast an enchantment. Questing, you get your butt out of here. Straight into trash. We're gonna grab our triome. Like considering uh if I want to play things off Lelia or just get Lelia out. I'm just gonna get Lelia out. Perfect. I do have forest. I sometimes I steal binding the old gods when I'm not playing a deck with forests in it. Namely Nicol Bolas. That's always embarrassing. This will tap for tons and tons of mana. But I now have tons and tons of mana. It took me a while, but I got there. Aw, they killed Lelia. They get a treasure. A land? Wait. A land? I did it! I made a land! Taking out that Sanctum Weaver, so they don't have truly obscene amounts of mana. Yes, you can have your plus one, plus one counter. Just regular obscene amounts of mana. Yeah, that thing was tapping for four. At the minimum. Leyline Binding, would you like to exile my Kindling, my Statuary, or my PNLR? They're going for the Kindling. They're saying no burn spells. Not today, not now. You don't want to get rid of my... My beautiful blue mana. Ooh, second shrine. Signet into a tolly. Casting stuff for free. What do we see? Okay, nothing too interesting, but sure, I'll, I'll still... I'm sure I have enchantments in my deck. What do I want? Big mana or some... I want some slightly more, like, one-off value. Boop, boop. Attacking for two. Boop, boop. Attacking for two. Virtue of persistence. 
that will be getting them one of these creatures from Graveyard. Showdown of the Scalds. Bringing out Rocco. Want to make a tally big enough to just attack straight through this. That seems reasonably large. Oh, I could tap all of those for this. Nah, I'd rather hold the heroic intervention. Loads of damage! Boom, 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 pow. We've exiled. <laughs> Giant killer? I cannot cast it. I don't have white mana right now. They're grabbing Lelia. That will let them dig a little deeper. They gain two life off the Sanctum. Nice world tree. Elspeth's Nightmare. They, they target Rocco, I guess? Indestructible! Hello, yes, one dinosaur, please. They still have six mana. Mana now of any color. They're swinging in with Lelia, digging, looking for. You got a D spark, but we're all hex proofed up. Farewell is six mana. That's that's like number one in the big scared of stuff. A double block for no reason other than we can. They're indestructible and stuff. So long as they have like wanderer or settle mana up though, I'm not flinging in. Here. Oh, Meat Hook Massacre! That will kill PNLR and all of the little Thop Thops. They get a treasure. They don't gain any life, though, because this is the alchemy version of Meat Hook Massacre. Chromatic Lantern leaves them with only one mana. I think we're good. They pay the one, this does get bigger, but they already know about this giant killer. We kill him. Uh, giantly. Game. We swing in. We're lethal. GG. Lotho, corrupt sheriff. Lotho cares about either playing ca player casting more than one spell per turn. Because when you do, well, lose life, get a treasure! Uh, we actually have a really sweet start here because we can get down Rocco on turn two. Evanson Pilgrim taps for white. Um, we have all three of our colors. We can just play Rocco bright and early. I don't know if I want to, since they're an Orzov deck and I feel they're very likely to be able to kill Rocco. I'm still gonna do it. All right, bringing out the chef. Here they are. Exiling some delicious treats. Look, you got ramp. You don't want to kill Rocco. You want to ramp. No, they they want to kill Rocco. 
But they gave me a couple of artifacts, these nice maps. I'll move Rocco back off to the side. And, ooh, an inspiring statuary, eh? Let me play this land. Tap you to make sure I still have red and or green. Because now I'll be able to use these to cast my spells. I don't have anything I'd be doing for Seek the Beast, so I'm just going to play. A questing druid. Now when I cast a white, blue, black, or red, anything but green, this Quirion Dryad by any other name gets a plus one plus one counter. Hey, Lotho! Ooh, yes, yes. Do I pay the one? No. I'm busy doing this. One, two, three. Uh, I'm going to destroy this map token. This map token. And the questing druid. Indomitable creativity. Let's go. Turning three of my artifacts and or creatures into some different ones. Ooh, I got Oracle of, uh, Oracle of Moldiah and Rahilda. This wasn't like super explosive. Ho hopefully with Oracle, we'll be able to get through a lot of lands and get a lot of mana set up. You really can go with a lot of different themes for Rocco. I've seen plus one, plus one counter themed Roccos. I've seen tokens themed Roccos. Mine's mostly about the exile abilities. Aw, oh, man. There goes my inspiring statuary. Oh, wow. Now we have nothing. I use Showdown of the Skulls to try and find some mana. There's a land. I can't cast anything, though. We'll have to play these next turn if we want them. I could go for, like, just one of them. Like, just the Bonehoed Dracosaur. Well, that could be a good target for uh, Get Lost. I won't be able to use any of my mana abilities. In Alar. Exiling and making some thopters. Looking for lands. I'll take that. And sure, no born horde Dracosaur. That's all right. I feel like that was a good turn for PNLR. And also made sure I got a land this turn. Hi, Lotho! Uh, Drain and Lindvala can make food. Cool. Inquisition of Kozilek can either drop this or this. I think you have to hit the Direfleet Daredevil, because otherwise I'm turning around and taking that and get lost. What? You don't want to make food? Why not? I want to see what Kentorius gets. Bigger goose. We discover... Ooh, Invasion of Zendikar. Nice. A bunch of stuff is happening. I get a treasure. Making Pia a little bit bigger.
Anyone can cook. <laughs> I'll play all these beautiful spells. Doctor for free. Block P and LR. Go Celtics. I agree. I'm going to the Celtics game tonight. I'm very excited. It's the only game I'm going to this season. It's to see Marcus Smart. Even though he's going to be on the bench. I'm going to get to see him. Ah, uh, yes. More counters. think they'll have another board wipe? They certainly could. I feel like you don't want that many board wipes in a Lotho deck. I, I do like the idea of like a Lotho um, death and taxes though, which is a lot of what we've seen so far. We've seen Esper Sentinel, Draenei Linval, and Lotho. Eternal Wanderer! What do you leave me with? The weakest creature is a tapped Thopter. Oh, never mind. They're not going for killing Kentorius. They're just blinking my beefed up PNLR. Hmm. I can only attack you with one thing. Oh, I was trying to declare the rest of the attackers to face, but yeah, all right. Who needs damage? Okay. I guess I've got plenty of mana, so I'll pop down Rocco. See what we get out of exile. Hey, Pia's back! Maybe it's a meat hook massacre? <gasps> Monkey! They're blinking Pia again. Captain Eberhardt going to tax the things we draw and discount their things. I feel like I, I still can't figure out why they didn't board wipe with Wanderer. Like, if there's something I'm missing. <gasps> Make the goose even bigger. gonna honk and bonk. They, they have three mana. They have a discount spell only if they drew it on the turn. Let's see, one, two, three, five, six, seven. Okay. I don't know if it was still drawn this turn if it was in exile. find out. I'm just gonna hit face. Perfect. 
Forbidden Goblet. You want me to drink from it? This goblet? The forbidden one? While I'm swinging in with all of my beautiful Rocco creatures? Yeah, okay. We'll let our opponent handle combat from here, and I'll sip from the horrible cup that hurts to drink from. They're sacrificing. Making some treasures. Don't have to worry about Everheart anymore. We put this into exile. We cast it. And Contorius wins us the game! GG! Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you enjoyed us playing from exile with Rocco Street Chef. I think this deck is really fun and has a lot of kind of cool new cards. Uh, I really like seeing Kentorius playing with all of our spells from exile, draining out our opponent on top of all these other really sweet cards that we get to cast. Uh, I like to play cards from exile because so often it means that I'm playing my opponent's cards and I got to do that a bit in this video too. I also do like the food synergies. They did add a few of them in the most recent Eldraine as well. So Rocco always getting more and more pieces. And as you saw with the other Rocco we matched up against, you can even lean more into those plus one plus one counter synergies like with An Impacal. Tons of great ways to play this deck and a lot of flexibility in the build. I also feel that uh, the addition of the fetch lands do really help with getting out Rocco early since three different colors of mana on like turn two and three is tricky to get, but makes it a lot easier when you have essentially three more triomes in your deck or like super flexible fetch lands. I hope you like this video and if you're looking for the deck list, it is in the description below. If there's a commander you'd like to see me build or update, especially a commander that's in the new set that's coming out in just a few days, please let me know in the comments. This one was a request. Uh, people asked, would you please update Rocco? And I said, sure. I put it on a poll on my channel with a bunch of other commanders and this one was voted to the top. Some of the other ones that were actually voted for that we haven't gotten to yet include Radic, Yuri, Prosper, Koth, Jodzi, Aurelia, and Ashnod. So hopefully we'll get to some of those soon. I've got a whole list of them. So I've got lots of commanders to get to. Thank you so much for watching and have a brutal day.